take a trip with us to New Bog. Just promise not to drink the goo. Oh my God. If you get sucked into the Matrix, Matrix. we will send a phone for you. Do you believe in fate? But every movie has a plot hole. like uh, your opinion, man. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Plotaholics podcast. I am Shane Wilson, and I'm joined, as always, by the Kevin Costner of Foreplay, Brian <laughs> Tan. <laughs> Brian. I like it. I welcome like it. in. To what is sure to be a day remembered as as uh, you know, it's it's an episode. It's all about a very popular holiday. We are celebrating today uh, one man who came back from the dead only to give his life to save his friends and help his friends. I'm talking, of course, about the uh, savior Ivory and the film How High. Oh man! How Happy high. Easter! Yeah, absolutely. He did, and you know what? He he came back in a particular fashion a number of days after his initial yeah, death. It's true. <laughs> so I mean, in a lot of ways, yeah. How high is an alternate it's, view of Easter? It is an Easter film, and it is. I would yes, say, in a lot of ways, it has a it's it has a much kinder worldview than something like Passion of the Christ. Yeah, at least in this, there's no torture porn. Yeah, there's so, there's borderline softcore porn in, at times, but hey, there's nothing wrong with. I mean, honestly, if we could just replace the borderline with softcore porn, that'd be even better. I mean, yeah. why? I border, mean, now why I, I don't know if you want to open the plotaholics up to Skinamax features uh, as a subject of conversation, but what I'm we here what for we have we have done hard ticket to Hawaii. Do so you want to do mean, summer of Skinamax? And just do all classic 90s softcore porn films? I don't think Sharon would mind. Okay, well, <laughs> hey, holler. Or we could do or we could do Summer of Sedaris. Yeah, we, we are we are batting around our ideas currently for what we're gonna do with this this summer programming as it kicks up in a little bit. But Brian, why don't you go ahead and Maybe. slice us off a little bit of that tanopsis for the advertised content? All right. All right. In this film, how high? Two way underachieving slackers smoke the ashes of a friend of theirs, right? Well, a friend of one of theirs before they go to take the THC test and suddenly have their pick of any educational institution. And of course, they choose Harvard and the chaos and the silliness does ensue. It does. It does ensue indeed. in so many different ways. Uh, we have, I've been trying to think uh, over the last couple of days here, how, uh, what were the uh, different stoner comedies that we have covered here on the podcast? I know uh, we did Half Baked in year yeah. one. Yep. We done Half Baked. Um... Was, was Friday a part of this? Uh, or because I don't think that's a stoner comedy necessarily. It's not necessarily a stoner comedy. It's more just. So have we only done half baked in this in this particular genre? I think so. Yeah. I mean, we talked about doing some other things. We just haven't done it. Yeah. Yeah. So... Let me see. We let me. I'm sort of looking through here. Actually, year one we. Let me see. We didn't do. Half baked, yeah. We not year. I mean, that was no, technically year, year two. We did yeah, half baked. Year two was half baked, and then 
yeah, we did not yeah. get to a second one until this year, it looks like. Yeah. So and what, I mean, what a time yeah, to be alive. Yeah, I know, right? Holy crap, the plot of Holics. Not only do we return to the um to John to the John Singleton tribute, but now we return to the uh the Stoner comedy. That's tribute. right. So yay. Uh now Brian, let's I think maybe refresh people's minds on what some of the hallmarks of a stoner comedy are uh, before getting right. into the finer points of this particular entry. Two guys, two guys, marijuana, hijinks of adventure. Is it always and, two or is it just a group? I mean, a lot of the times it's, I mean, a lot of the times it's two, but sometimes there are a group half baked being one of them. Mm -hmm. But for, you're right. For the most part, it seems to be two yeah. because you have Cheech yeah. and Chong, you have Harold Chong. and Kumar, mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, technically, technically, you have Craig and Smokey because actually it could be a stoner comedy because they get high a lot. So mm -hmm. you got Craig and Smokey. You got um, let me see who else is there. Harold and Kumar. We already said them. Cheech and Chong, um, Craig and Smokey, Craig and Day Day. Mm -hmm. um, so what is it? Do you think? Uh, about the two person setup that really lends itself to this kind of comedy. I think part of it is because I think it's funnier when you have two, when you have four, then you're getting to the point where, Oh dude, where's my car? So you have Jesse and Chester. Yeah. Um, I think the reason why it works. Oh, and then of course, anything with Jay and silent Bob, pineapple express, Ted, um so on and so forth yeah i think the reason why it works best with two is because you know most of these stoner films are only about what 90 minutes long mm -hmm. so it's a lot easier to get a lot done with two than if you've got four leads if you've got four main people you know does that make sense yeah yeah i mean i guess you you don't have a single lead because in most uh getting high situations you want to do that with a buddy uh, right or with friends right because everything is funnier whenever you're like kicking it with whatever with yeah whatever you've got yeah whatever you got you know number one not not a lot of people want to get high alone you know just like right. a lot of folks they get really really you know what's the word i look for they get insulted if you don't drink with them right you know, so yeah, you, you know, so it's two or more, it's always two or more. And, um, but yeah, sometimes I just feel like, you know, the, the, the stoner genre works really, really well with just two best friends on these adventures. I feel. Yeah. Like. Now let me ask you this. Okay. Uh, in, so we have, we have two friends, uh, how, uh, well, one thing I like though is that they're not friends initially. They just That's happen true. to meet up, which makes it kind of different because most stoner yeah. films, they've been friends a long time since little kids. Right. Yeah, that is that's a good point. And they're actually brought together by the power of like needing to smoke, right? Like uh, Yeah, cuz they're getting the, ready to take the big test. Uh-huh. And one of them has uh the I mean the blunt and then one of them has the weed right so they sort of have the missing pieces for each other and so they're, right. they're brought together by mutual need which is which is different because in, a, in the other ones that you mentioned all of those guys have known each other forever right and they've already got their routine you look at harold and kumar you look at half baked cheech and chong whatever these guys know each other they already do their own thing and they have their own routines as anyone that smokes weed does. You got a routine. Right. Uh, now, let me ask you this. Uh, are there any examples, Brian, of a stoner comedy that features two female leads? I'm sure there are, but I haven't seen them, which is uh, unfortunate. I would love to see female led stoner films. Right. Give me a stoner film with Sarah Silverman and Kate McKinnon. Kate <laughs> I've got time for Kate. You know, Sarah Silverman too. Oh my God, I love Sarah, Sarah Silverman. Yeah, those, those are another. Those are two big crushes for me right there, man. Right there, I would love to see a Sarah Silverman 
And um, or better yet, what about Janine Garofalo and Sarah Silverman? Yes. What about Janine Garofalo? Oh man, Janine Garofalo would carry. only if they make the joke that we made way back in our first year about Jimmy Garofalo, Janine Garofalo, and Mark <laughs> Ruffalo. There you go. I want all three of them in a stoner comedy together. I want Sarah Silverman to look at Janine Garofalo, who is in in this film playing herself, mm-hmm. Janine Garofalo. Yeah. And, oh no, actually, maybe she's not. Maybe she's playing just some regular chick named like Susie, Susie Alabaster, and. Uh, Sarah Silverman looks at Susie, Sarah, Susie Alabaster and she's like, Susie, oh my God, you look just like Janine Garofalo. <laughs> and, but it and is Janine the, Garofalo. How have they yeah. never made a fourth wall joke like that? In one of these I would movies? love that. And what I would really like though, is that there's a Janine Garofalo in that universe that's married right. to Jimmy Garofalo. So yes. she's Janine Garofalo Garofalo. Yeah. But over and, the her, course of- and her first cousin is Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. But over the course of them getting super high, like, Sarah Silverman sees Mark Ruffalo like she like uh, Janine Garofalo turns into Mark Ruffalo and then turns into Jimmy Garofalo. Yeah. A la like uh, Benedict Cumberbatch in the bubble sort of situation. Whoa. That was the only good part of that. Piece yeah. Of crap. But <laughs> or okay, better so... yet, what, what, what if they're getting high, right? Mm-hmm. And they're talking about like they're having like a real perverted sex talk. And Janine, Garof- Janine Garofalo says man, I wouldn't mind if Mark Ruffalo and Jimmy Garoppolo just slapped fives over my back. And mm-hmm. then um, Sarah Silverman looks over and Janine Garoppolo is, you know, in the doggy style position and Mark Ruffalo and Jimmy Garoppolo are just, and it's just like a quick cameo, just like that. Yeah. And then when like, you know, she sort of shakes her head and looks back and Susie Alabaster sitting there and is like, what? And she's like, no, nothing, nothing. Yeah, that'd um, be awesome. I am. That's my here. kind of movie right there. That is my kind of movie. Yeah, I'm looking here at uh, an article from FilmInquiry.com that's discussing uh, female-led or the the lack of female-led stoner comedies, and it mentions solo female leads that smoke pot as a sort of a secondary character trait, like Cameron Diaz and Bad Teacher, Jennifer Aniston and Wanderlust, uh, and mm-hmm. then it mentions a television series which is the best example i could come up with uh broad city uh is a comedy central uh series that was airing sort of in the same block as workaholics uh but this is a uh two female leads uh abby jacobson and alana glazer they play two stoner chicks and that is probably the best example that I can come up with of a female led stoner comedy. And it is not a film. It's a series. Okay. That sounds pretty cool. It is very good. By the I way, gotta try wa- Maybe I, got, I should try watching it. I should, I, I yeah. should really give it a whirl. Give it a go. It's pretty wild. Uh, so yeah. So then uh, I was going, my next question about characteristics of stoner films would be how essential in your estimation is a couch guy. I mean, they all have them. They, they they have them there for a reason. So... Not only couch guys, but how essential is it that your couch guy doesn't say very much? I mean, once again, it's a formula. It's a formula that right. just works. And then Although, like, the couch guy only they ever talk talks right needed. at the end? Right. I mean, I mean, you get that with the Jay and Silent Bob stuff right there. Yeah. It's, it's right. in his name. You know, and I think it I think it makes it hilarious because anyone that smokes weed, we always have that one dude that just doesn't say much, but what he mm-hmm. does is very, very profound. Like me, I was the J of my group. Mm-hmm. There was actually one time we got high once and walked to an A plus and I was having a conversation with the cops and they were just like waiting for me to like incriminate myself, but I wouldn't. My buddy was like Man, why the hell are you talking to the cops? That's a waste of weed. I said, man, <laughs> I was just having fun. They was waiting for me to give myself up, but I didn't give myself up. And that's the joke. And they're just looking at me like, you're an asshole. <laughs> and now that was that happening uh, back home in, in Pittsburgh? Well, I'm here in Pittsburgh now. Yeah. Yeah. This was back when I was like 20. So I was in my 20s. Yeah. I was just um, I was just a litany of the stupid things I did. Yeah, the mean, mean Pittsburgh streets. Hey, Pittsburgh does have its moments, man. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You better go up on the north side with that shit and you'll find out real quick. (laughs) 
I'm cat- I'll tell you one thing, man. The north side of Pittsburgh, that's one section of Pittsburgh I don't I never like going to. You don't mess I went with it. Uh uh. I don't go to the north side. When I was driving um Lyft, anytime I had a fare that was going to the north side, I'm like, ooh, I don't wanna be up here. No, yeah. no, no. It's like no, man, no, y'all no. better y'all better be ready to tip a brother. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mess up yo, man, there's a section up there called the Mexican War Streets. Oh, okay. Well, they didn't bury the lead there, did they? No, I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying that bad things happen on the Mexican war streets all the time. I'm just saying I'm not going to be there to verify that they do or they don't. Cause right. I'm right. not going to be a ain't witness. No, no, ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, yeah, that is, that's all very fair. Uh, Brian, this film obviously uh, helmed in the lead roles by Method Man and Red Man. Uh, two men... Uh, one very methodical, one very red, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is a very, very good way to, to <laughs> talk about them as well. One methodical, one red. <laughs> yeah, I now is he well read? Mm, well, I think that in I think that you would find that he is not at least not the <laughs> at least not the character that he plays here, right? No, not at all. No. Um, method man, meth- methodical man, uh, obviously. <laughs> methodical. That is a superhero name, man. That is a superhero's name. Methodical right. man. Yeah. What is his uh, superpower? Well, he's terribly methodical. Yeah. And, you know, I, these guys, obviously, there's like some, some Wu Tang stuff. There's some Def Jam stuff here. Uh, there's the, the duo, uh, career the, the the fact that they did things together there's the fact that i think red man was featured on no maybe method man was featured on a limp biscuit track uh, uh i think that was i think that was method i think that was method. yeah i think you're right yeah it was in together now limp biscuit and method man uh and the, and then we never heard from him again <laughs> uh no i'm just kidding after no, that, that was... after that method man was like man I'm just going to start acting. This doesn't ruin my musical cred. Being right. <laughs> yeah. I decided to limp with the biscuit. And, uh, I'm just going to act now. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. And so these guys are, uh, you know, we meet uh, out of the gate a, uh, let's see. I'm trying to, my tabs are getting all. We, we, we meet, um, we meet Jamal's mother um, pay, played by, um, the great Anna Marie Hornsford, who is also Craig's mother in Friday. So this is our second time with her on the plot yep. of Hollies. Uh, and I was, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, nah, that, that whole, that, that whole opening exchange just really tells you how super over the top this movie was going to be. Yeah. Well, and I'm looking at the opening sequence where Silas is selling drugs through the oh. hole in his door. Oh yeah. He's selling through the peephole. Yeah. 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 And so you've got the one guy come through. That's like, do you have anything for a head wound? He's like, you don't have a head wound. And he's like, <laughs> right. I do but now. the best part, the best part of that situation is when he's like, yo man, he's like, I'm starting to see some things. I'm starting to notice some things. He's like, you're coming down off of a four day crack bench. You're just like, that's just reality. <laughs> <laughs> Crackhead! Oh my goodness, that that was. I mean, I have to admit that was pretty funny. That that was because. Yeah, well, here, well, here's my issue with this movie. This is the issue that I had the whole time, and I kept yeah. saying it to Sharon over and over again. <coughs> Excuse me. I understand in films you got to suspend disbelief, mm-hmm. but there's no way in hell that you can have me believe that Red Man and Method Man are college age. Well, just, not, not just straight not. out of high school, at least, right? Like, they didn't just graduate high school. Dude, Red, I mean, Method Man was already, like, this movie came out, what, 2001? 2001. Oh, Why did I say 2005? Oh, Is that, maybe, that? oh, that's that's the Wedding Crashers. Yeah, Method Man was already 30. And Red Man was 31. So it's like, yeah, you're not convincing. You're a super. And then it's like, all right, hey, you're not convincing me that you're college age, number one. Number two, if you already in your 30s and you still living at home with your mom and it's not because you got a divorce and had to start life all over again or you are a victim of a Ponzi scheme and started all over again 
or you had all of your money in the stock market and the stock market imploded and you got to start all over again, you just never left your mama house. Basically, if you're Will Ferrell in Wedding Crashers, there's a problem with you. There's or a big you're, problem. Uh... Or if you're Will Ferrell and Step Brothers, or if you're Will yeah. Ferrell in, <laughs> if you're if you're Will Ferrell in a movie, in your movie, in life, it's a problem. There's a problem with you. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think that the difficulty with talking stoner comedy is typically that the plot is is always pretty thin. Here you have two guys that uh, would not have made it into Harvard. They take their uh, THCs, which are... Testing for higher credentials. <laughs> right, which is a, a riff on the SATs, and they uh, do really well. And we discover that the reason that they do really well is because uh, Silas, uh, Silas's friend, Ivory, uh, is uh, <laughs> dies early in the film. Now, this is, this is a bit... Uh, that I thought was abandoned too early, right? So first of all, uh, Ivory, <laughs> his death is so ridiculous. It um, really is. Well, it starts because he gets, he has some little hair poop. Like, he almost, he almost has a unibrow, but it's yeah. just a little patch. And he yeah, tries he's going to, go to meet up with this chick that he met online. Yeah, in the early days of MySpace. Mm -hmm. and she sees that little he has his dreads and he has that and it's like yeah i'm not gonna do nothing with you so he goes home and is getting high watching field of dreams because she liked kevin costner but he's Listen so that. high that that um tracy morgan is in field of dreams <laughs> that shit was so funny dude that was funny i did enjoy that that was i also funny. really laughed out loud whenever he was like she loves kevin costner movies and Silas is like uh, Dances with Wolves that's a good one and then the other guy says yeah Field of Dreams he goes that movie's corny like <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> I was like that is such a pothead joke right like it that really is, is. it yeah. really is but yeah the Tracy Morgan stuff was so funny to me and I Tracy thought that that Morgan was something was so that funny. I thought that was something that was also kind of abandoned too like I needed more Tracy Morgan yeah I mean who needs Captain Morgan when you got Tracy Morgan that's right. I mean, let, let's be real. But so, and matter of fact, was, why don't we just have a movie of Tracy Morgan in these movies? Yeah, just being Tracy Morgan in them. Like, yes. can we get Tracy Morgan in in Malcolm X? Can we get Tracy Morgan in um, Howard's End? Can we get oh. Tracy Morgan as Kylo Ren in the sequel trilogy? <laughs> right. Yes. Oh my God! Can you imagine? <laughs> like that scene where Kylo Ren is like shirtless in The Last Jedi. And <laughs> it's really just Tracy Morgan. He goes, what? What? You got a problem? Because I got man titties. <laughs> what fuck you looking at? And then, but then there's that scene from 30 Rock where he's like running down the road, swinging a plastic lightsaber saying, I am a Jedi. I am a Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see. All right. I want to see Tracy Morgan just like randomly show up in like gangs of New York. Yeah. Oh, hell no, nah, Bill. This motherfucker tried to set you up, man. You better go wilding out on his ass. I do like the I, I idea that I want Tracy Morgan to be in a movie about how Tracy Morgan was at one point in every movie, but he got scrubbed. Like they digitally took him out of all of them. And so we get to see him in all of these movies like just like superimposed into them as a minor character just being loud as shit i would love that i mean yeah. honestly i want to know why we don't have more tracy morgan like, yeah i want to know why well who do you find is more funny tracy morgan or kevin hart who do you find funny? i think tracy morgan is more funny i think that kevin hart i think the only reason why kevin hart is more popular is because Tracy Morgan still kind of looks like he'll hurt somebody. Or Kevin I think Hart, Kevin, who, who's Kevin Hart going to hurt? Kevin Hart, to me, just feels too mechanical, too polished, right? Like it's a machine. Like the entire right. Kevin Hart, like enterprise, right? Persona. Is, the whole right. persona. Yeah. Well, and, that, and, I, and that's I think not to that, say he's not funny. It's just like, I think that Tracy is more genuine. Yeah. Well, I think that Kevin Hart also has the right form of chemistry with the mm -hmm. right people 
Yeah. Like, let, let's be real. Central Intelligence is what really helps skyrocket Tracy. I mean, um, Kevin Hart to the next level. Yeah. If he does, if he doesn't have that kind of um, chemistry with Dwayne Johnson, he doesn't blow up as hard. Like he was already doing really, really great. He was already doing great, but that chemistry with The Rock really helped him. For sure. Where, yeah. Where if Tracy Morgan was able to have that kind of chemistry with someone, like I guarantee you, if Tracy Morgan had good chemistry with Leonardo DiCaprio, man, Tracy Morgan would be in every movie <laughs> DiCaprio is in. Yeah. Instead of Jonah Hill. Yeah. Or better yet, Tracy Morgan would have been in The Departed instead of Anthony Anderson. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Another another character, another another great actor who was wasted in a film, by yeah. the way. Um, so Ivory sets himself on fire. Yes, fell asleep smoking weed, set himself on fire, and it fell out of a window and then got hit by a bus. Now, right. Earlier now, on in the so, movie, he he tells Silas, Man, I get hit up by a bus. Man, I'm still about you. You my man, Silas, peace, Silas. So what I was, th this is the bit that I thought was abandoned too early that I thought would have been f so funny, right? So like he gets caught on fire and he falls out of the window, right? And so we think mm -hmm. initially that that's how he died. But then later he tells Silas that he got hit by a bus. He goes, no, 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 you fell out. And then we like see it replayed again. And we see right. him catch himself on fire, fall out the window and then sit up. He's like, I can't believe I survived. I can't feel my legs, but at least I survived. And then a bus <laughs> hits him. And I thought it would be funny to continue doing that. And adding like another he just thing keeps to dying it. Dying in some way, yeah. Right. And so, like, the next time it's like he falls out the window on fire, he gets hit by a bus, and then, like, the bus drags him down the road and drags him, like, over wet cement. And then he's, like, stuck in the wet cement or something, right? And right. then, like, and then, like a, a, a and then in the next one, like, a piano falls on him from somewhere. Right. right? Like, <laughs> Make it a cartoon. Make it into a cartoon. Yeah. Each, each, each thing is way more insane than the last. Yeah. Uh, but, that I thought would be yeah, really right. funny. Right, because it would explain how he was able to get his ashes to um, grow a marijuana plant and smoke them. Yeah, because and that that's, is ultimately that's how what they happens. get to Harvard. Yeah, yeah. They, he he uses his ashes to grow a strain of weed. So when he smokes it, I Ivory gives him all the answers to the tests, mm -hmm. and that's how they get into. They can go to any of these schools. Then of course you see all the schools that are vying for them. Yeah. But then Harvard comes because they need they need tokens, essentially. They yeah. need to show ethnic diversity. Right. And they I would I completely understand why, because when you've got people like Bart uh, oh, and running the God. show over there and also one of my favorite jokes yeah. in this whole movie, Dean Kane. Dean Kane. Oh, I was laughing my ass off every single time they said <laughs> his name. Every yeah. time they said his name, I was laughing my ass off. Dude. O Oba Babatunde is yeah. so funny. He is so funny. This is the second time we've had him on the show because we he was in life with Eddie Murphy oh, and um, Martin go. Lawrence. Yeah. So and he's always a win, man. He's because he, he's been man. he's been in some good stuff. He was in he was only in that thing you do for like five minutes, but he was kind of cool in that. Mm -hmm. Um, he was in John Q with um Denzel. So I mean. This guy's a good actor, man. He 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 can do his thing, and he can hang with anybody. And of course, he's in this sort of slapsticky type of film, but he never feels the one thing that I like about his performance. You ever notice that when you get some of these actors that are good actors that are in silly movies like this, and it's like, wow, you really have like no place in this film. You don't fit in. He fits right into this movie. He gets yeah. right into the. Oh, he was also, I'm seeing this now, he's also voiced Lando Calrissian in a number of uh, Star Wars video games. Nice. <clears throat> Most recently, Disney Infinity 3.0, so we saw how quickly that whole franchise ended. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even realize that that was a thing. Disney Infinity, it was basically the same thing as um, Outlanders. Or not Outlanders. Oh. Yeah, what are they called, Outlanders? Skylanders. Skylanders. Oh. Outlanders is the... Outlanders is the the, the time traveling sex TV show. Yeah, those are two different things. Don't go to Disney looking for <laughs> Outlanders. No, you're not going to. Even find if that. you find it, it'll all be edited. Pretty much. Just would it be a black box or would it be like the digital scramble? 
I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But how did they? How did they censor the butts? How did they censor the mermaid butts? Yeah, that's a good point by you. I, I I made it a point that I'm boycotting any showing of um of Splash that's on Disney. I'll just <laughs> yeah. buy the I'll just buy an old Blu-ray so I can see Daryl Hannah's butt. Hashtag yeah. feed butt. Um. So they get into Harvard and. Yep. There is immediately the uh, Bart, uh, the, the Bart uh, rivalry. The, yep. The the racist, um, the the racist sports guy who's mm-hmm. dating a black woman, played by um, we get Lisa Turtle in this one. Yeah. Uh, Lark, uh, Lark, Jason Lark, Voorhees' Jason. Is stepsister. Yeah, Lark Jason Voorhees, <laughs> and um, <laughs> uh, Lisa Turtle. She's someone that honestly, anytime I see her in anything that's not saved by the bell, I'm like, what are you doing here? Go back. to Yeah. But I also kind of feel sorry for her for that reason. Cause I feel like she's completely capable of, of, of everything. She just got saddled with that, uh, saved by the bell thing. And uh, unlike some of the others, you know, saved by the bell was uniquely cruel to its female stars. Uh, really? Really because AC Slater and Zach Morris were both able to cl- cl- like crawl out from under Saved by the Bell and survive. Yeah, but then again, well, the thing is though is that with um with Mario Lopez, he was on Animal Planet and then he went crazy in politics and so now he's just a lunatic somewhere. Mark Paul he was Gosselin, doing like Entertainment Tonight. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And then of course we lost Screech, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is still very very sad. Yeah, rip. but I mean, I, I mean, yeah, but I mean, what's crazy with her though is that I do feel bad for her because she isn't a bad actress. It's just that she is so Lisa Turtle. Yeah, for sure. She's never gonna get out of that. Yeah. I mean, even when she was on Fresh Prince of Bel Air, I'm like, why don't you go back to Bayside? What are you doing in Bel Air? Yeah, and and she is she's dating uh, Bart, and uh, obviously Jamal uh, decides that he is going to join the row team and try to beat out Bart at his own game. Meanwhile, Silas enrolls in botany uh, in order to try to perfect his uh, marijuana growing skills. Yep. Um, they are also told that the conditions of their scholarship. Uh, dictate that they must maintain a 2.0 GPA in order to stay in college uh, or stay at Harvard rather. And so um, they're, you know, they're working on things. Uh, Silas is working on this other project to try to keep him <coughs> there. Truth serum. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, they, on a truth serum. and they are both also, um, they both run up against, you know, not only are they dealing with Bart and Dean Kane, but also this uh, campus, <laughs> Uh, I don't even want to call them security, but campus patrol, I guess, would be the way to call it. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. And that that dude is just like, wow. Like some of these characters are just I mean, they're they're totally, totally, totally like just over the top. Like even and I love Hector Elizondo as the crew coach. Yeah, I like him, too. I like him and everything I see him. I I, I I don't think he's he's never done anything that I've disliked. And no yeah. matter how small his part, this is our second time with him as well because he was in Necessary Roughness. That's right. Yeah, everything we, everything I see him in, he's no matter how short he's in it, he's great. He even he even helped make the really really bad Beverly Hills Cop movie kind of good. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll tell you, like I don't know, this movie is. Maybe it was just the mood that I was in, but I'm watching yeah. this and I'm like, all right, you know, there's some funny parts of this movie, but, and I've been hearing for years, but you've never watched how high, what are you doing? And it's like, yeah, I, I think that it suffers from the same thing that a lot of this genre of film suffers from. And that is the, the first half is really funny. And then yeah. they have to just do the drags. story part. And yeah, and the story part is never is is never really fully. Uh, it's it's a second. It's um it's an afterthought, right? Because the the pot and the jokes are the initial like upfront thought whenever they're writing it to begin with, and then they realize right. they have to have a story in here somewhere, and then they tack that on at the end. And so you it all sort of culminates in this big alumni dinner uh, climax that 
just, you know, I mean, it, it works or it doesn't work for you. Uh, I guess it all kind of hinges on whether or not you're high, right? Right. Well, not only that, but I think that a lot of people also, they just have certain certain sonar films that they're super protective of, and that's their thing. Yeah. Like, like Half-Baked does a really good job at staying funny. The only yeah. time Half-Baked really starts to drag a little bit, it doesn't drag for long. Because in the very next scene, you see um, Clarence Williams III, and it's funny all over again. Right. But this film, it doesn't have any of that. It has it has a talented cast. It's just that you don't have anybody. Like, if we would have had a little bit more of Tracy Morgan, yeah, it would have been better. Matter but of fact, honestly, if Tracy Morgan were Ivory. That's what I was about to say. Better. Like, that would have been excellent. And honestly, I think... As as good as Red Man and Method Man are here, like they're not actors. No, and they're not naturally funny. They're not someone that I want to laugh at. Yeah, you know? they 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 are. Um, they can they're, be funny. They're harder, right? Like their their whole persona is hard, and right. That is. Well, it's like Chris Rock said in um, in um, I can't remember what the name of the movie is. Um, where he dies and he's his soul's put into the white guy. Oh uh, yeah, right. I can't remember either. But he said, you know, no one wants to laugh at someone that could kick their ass. Right. You know, Red Man and Method Man, they look like they'll hurt somebody. Like you look yeah. at one of Red Man's earliest albums. That shit was kind of scary. Right. But and, now, and if you give me this movie with Tracy Morgan and Dave Chappelle. Oh my God, it's a totally different film and it's hilarious. Yeah, right. It's absolutely hilarious. Or, I mean, Tracy Morgan and Kevin Hart. Well, Kevin Hart wasn't super famous at this point. Kevin Hart was a couple years from being on. Yeah, I was I was trying to cast it. I mean, even Chris Rock, right? In the yeah, early Chris, 2000s could have oh been my, this. Chris, yeah, Chris Rock and um, Tracy Morgan would have been great. But Chris is like too sharp to play Stone, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Like, honestly, you would have to get somebody like young and not very well known. give me tracy and eddie yeah i could see that because i think I mean, eddie, eddie could play it eddie could play well, it well eddie murphy is such a great actor he can yeah. do anything just don't he give can... me martin lawrence no martin lawrence <laughs> just annoys the hell out of me like yeah if it's got martin you know, lawrence in it i send it back pretty much like there's only one martin lawrence movie that i even remotely sit and watch and even that is because he's not really in it that much. And that whole movie is a freaking mess. It's called Talking Dirty After Dark. It's one of mm -hmm. his earliest movies. But I mean, yeah, I think that this movie suffers because you've got your, your two leads aren't actors. They're not funny. They can be funny, but they're not funny. Um, did this, the Wayans Brothers that's... ever do a stoner comedy? I mean, if you want to consider the first two um, scary movie films. Yeah, stuff. I guess that would count. Now, if you would have had the Wayans brothers in this, oh my yeah, God, this would have been right. hilarious. That's what I was sort of thinking is like, give me, uh, give me like Sean Wayans. Yeah. Or give me, and... give me Marlon, give me Marlon Wayans and um, I take Tracy Morgan, Marlon Wayans and Tracy Morgan or Marlon yeah, that's Wayans. What, that was going to and... be my cast for sure. Then... I'm all for this. Yeah, because now all you've got comedians playing these parts and it just right. it just works better. You know, and we talked last week about um, whatever movie that was. Oh, The Bubble. Yeah. And like how it would it would have been funnier if you had cast unwitting action stars in it to play it straight, but still had filmed it as a comedy. Right. Uh, and that's not what this is. Right. This is a straight up comedy. There's no like meta narrative here. There's no fourth wall breaking. It is just played for laughs straight down the middle. And when you play when you're writing a script that is meant to be played for laughs, you need comedians to, to run it. Right. And I mean, Jeffrey Jones, who plays the vice president, this guy, you know, Jeffrey Jones, you'll remember he was um, Charles Dietz in uh, Beetlejuice, among other films. This is a guy who has amazing comedic timing and he's a comedic actor. Why don't you have him in the movie more often? You know, have him in the movie more. Yeah. No, you know, and like, or, and like Fred Willard. Yeah. Fred Willard is another guy who's totally hilarious. Yeah. And it's underutilized here. He's so mm -hmm. funny, dude. He really is. And I mean, I, I especially love, I love him in this. I love him in Anchorman. I love him in Harold and Kumar. Like, 
Fred Willard is so freaking funny. But I mean, I mean, imagine like I, I think of like some of the the funnier, like the cringier, funnier. Uh, uh, Joe is suggesting here, uh, Key and Peele. Uh, for I wouldn't uh, mind that. I don't think I'd um, mind that. I mean, yeah. I think I think early days Key and Key and Peele would have been great. For sure, yeah. Um, but I, I can get on board with a with a Key and Peele version. Or sure. better yet, instead of Mike Epps playing some pimp why don't you have mike epps and that other guy play silas and jamal and let method man and red man be the pimps yeah yeah that would have been even more funny that would have been that would have been good i'm not saying method man and red man can't be in the movie right obviously they can be but i just feel like they shouldn't be the leads you know right and i'll tell you the truth man red man and method man i mean like i said i'm not saying yeah you know you're right i'm not saying that they ain't funny i'm just saying that it's I was just, coming around to. Use for them. I was coming around to this point uh, a moment ago. Like the, I think of one of the one of the scenes in the movie that had potentially uh, a lot of laughs in it uh, was the the Black History class, uh, and with <laughs> all with the like super woke professor, right? Oh and, my god. Uh, and is I that, thought, is how, that what conservatives see when they talk about right, old yeah, college I'm, professors? I think that that's probably what they think. Like they're probably playing this at their town hall meetings to indicate like critical race theory, right? Oh my god! Uh, but yeah, so like <laughs> when I look at that scene, I think here's a scene that could have been so funny with different people in it. <laughs> right, right. Or I mean, even the one scene where they're smoking with their with their RA. Mm-hmm. And they won't pass in the joint because he has a cold sore. Right. I mean, that was kind of funny. That was funny. But once again, it had been even funnier with other people. And I mean, I mean, as much as this movie is, is it's a cult classic. It's got cult classic status. But it would have been a much better film if we had two different leads. Cause... Yeah, and it and it should be noted that you know when when we look at a at a stoner flick, we're not we're not looking for Schindler's List, right? Like we understand no. that this is a very niche sort of comedy, and it is only for you if you are a stoner, right? Like it is right for lack of a better term, and with every pun intended, baked into the fabric of the film, right? Hey, I like what you did with that. I'm a big fan. Big, big fan. (laughs) Hey, oh! Take your bow. Take your bow. There you go. (laughs) Exactly. Um, Now, even the character I Need Money, he even is real. Like, you think he's going to be, like, super important because he's the third guy, third or fourth or fifth guy. Right. And even he ain't really involved. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, he just talks at the end and they're like, oh, wow, you can talk now. And he does the whole right. like, little, like the Dave Chappelle Lil John thing, right? Where he's like super eloquently spoken. Right. And it's like, come on. And so like, or, and that's the joke, right? It's like, oh, this guy that we thought was like going to be a thug is like eloquent. Like that's, right. is that the joke? <laughs> yeah. And that's a joke that like, you know, well, that, that that's a product of its time as well, because it was For always, sure. oh, yeah. he's, oh, he speaks so well. He's so well right. spoken. One of my good friends, we still kind of make that joke about me. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, you speak so well. And I was right. like, oh yeah, I don't, I don't sound like one of them. <laughs> it's like, come on, man, let's just stop. But I'll, I'll say this, uh, what, among the funnier parts of the movie also was when um, Dean Kane is, um, he gets the pot brownies and mm-hmm. he just starts acting real wild. But even, even that, as funny as that was, that could have been written a little bit better to, you know what I mean? Like, give me yeah. a scene with him finally, like, looking at his wife and be like, look at that fat ass. And then they start, like, having sex, like, right there in public because he has no inhibitions, you know? I think that, that you just wanted, I think you really wanted this movie to be softcore porn. I just, you know what I want <laughs> is that, what, what I wanted from this movie is that I'm getting all aspects of stoner comedy meets college comedy mm-hmm. but I, oh, didn't right. get, I didn't get much of either one this movie yeah what wasn't able to be what it wanted to be yeah like i said it, the the stoner comedy runs pretty hard for the first <laughs> 30 minutes but then they weren't able to find it once they got to the story right 
Because, I mean, you, you look at a lot of college comedies that came out not just in this time frame, but 10, 20 years prior. And there's, you know, a lot of sexual content um, and all of that, as well as some raunchy jokes being played. And we didn't get a lot of that. We, we, yeah, I mean, we, we started to get it, but we didn't get it. It's, it's a movie that can't ultimately decide what it wants to be because not exactly. only is it a stoner comedy and a college comedy, it's a fish out of water comedy. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a black comedy, right? Like, and it's trying to sort of juggle all of these different things without giving proper attention to any of them. Right. And that I think is the biggest problem that I have with this film. Yeah. Is that and, and I think if you're in the mindset, right? Like if you're, if you are baked when you're watching this, then maybe it, maybe it works for you. Uh, and I do think that a lot of the jokes in the first half of it absolutely work for the high mind. It works for my drunk yeah. one. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, and like that Kevin Costner stuff I thought was so funny. Absolutely. And the Tracy Morgan stuff I thought was really funny, but yeah, I'm with you. I kind of like zoned out sort of down the stretch. Yeah. Cause you know, I watched this over on Tubi and you know, shout out to Tubi though, man. They, they do a Tubi. really yeah, they do really, really good with, um, you know, yeah, they put their commercial breaks in there. And I hate it when, and I hate when Hulu does this too, when you're watching a movie and they have like commercial interruptions. But Tubi, it was nice and short. It wasn't a long thing because they want to keep you engaged in the movie. And I really appreciated that. But mm -hmm. I'll tell you the truth, man. I look at those commercial breaks as an actual break because it's like, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It was it was a fine way to spend an evening. It just wasn't anything to write home about. Half-Baked is better. Half-Baked is way better. And I honestly, man, you know which of these I actually really like? You mentioned, I love Harold and Kumar. I think they're great. I actually, I'm kind of an apologist for Dude, Where's My Car as well. I think that- as a, I was just I was just getting ready to say, Dude, Where's My Car is really, really hilarious. It um, really is, dude. Like, it's so it funny. Is way, it is way funnier than any- Well, because eight. that movie- leans way into the stoner comedy, right? And it never right. loses sight of it. It stays there. And the whole film, all of Dude, Where's My Car is literally stoners that can't find something because they were too high. Yeah. And that just made it perfect. And that movie never tries to take itself seriously in any way. Mm -hmm. And it, it knows what it is and it sticks to it. Plus, yeah. I mean, at what point in that movie do you think that um, that um, Kelso and Doug Blatt are going to beat your ass. Nowhere, because Stifler yeah. is just Stifler is just a wimpier version of Stifler. He's not even Doug yeah, Blatt, he, and he yeah he hasn't been he hasn't gooned yet, you know. Right, he hasn't gooned yet, and the only thing we know about um about um crap, what the hell? Is, why is his name slipping from my brain? Ashton Kutcher is that he's Kelso. Yeah, that's it. So, and that's what makes them so funny. And um, somebody said, and then, in How High. And it made me think of, dude, where's my car? And I was like, no, and then. And Sharon's yeah. like, what are you talking about? So I explained it to her. She started laughing about it. Yeah, I think that uh, that, that one is great. And I, I go ahead and throw my hat on that one for next year. Absolutely. I'm definitely, I'm definitely all for some dude, where's my car for next year's 420. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, should we get uh, Bartender Smiley in the mix and yeah. Uh, yeah, but, offer but, some thoughts? It's probably a little a little shorter today, guys. Just keep in mind that we are recording. Uh, we're, we're playing. Uh, we're doing double duty today. So we're recording one episode now and yeah. one episode in a bit. So uh, yeah, if it's a little I'm shorter still, on and this. And I'm still fighting COVID, too. Yeah, so. I, do, I do promise you that whenever uh, the Wedding Crashers episode airs in a bit, we will more than make up for it. Uh, Absolutely. That's going to be a banger so let's get bartender smiling in here so that we can offer our final thoughts on how high and uh get get a bow put on this thing the plotaholics rating system for the movies it's a pretty simple system basically they break movies based on how many shots it takes to get through them so if you got a good movie and you get through it all the way sober then it takes zero shots to get through the movie and then if you got a really bad movie, then it could take up to five shots to get through the whole thing. I think you can try to figure out the middle part yourself. So what can I get you? All right. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll go I, first then. Yeah. Give you a moment to think about it. Um, for so, I mean, I, I don't dislike stoner comedy, obviously. I think stoner comedy can be very, very fun. 
The only issue with this film, and we already started to talk about it, this movie did not know what it wanted to be. It tried to be way too many genres rolled into one. And with leads that aren't actors, let alone comedic actors, like Breadman and Method Man, it, it's just, it's not hitting it for me. It's, it's yeah. really not. And there's so many other talented actors that they could have used. There's so many talented actors in this film that aren't really being used properly, yeah. in my opinion. And it suffers for it. You know, this film is more, th this film is trying to sit there and it, it's, it's hanging on the shoulders of Red Man and Method Man. And while they don't do a bad job, their shoulders together aren't enough to carry this film together. So it's, it's, this is one of those movies where, you know what, this movie is 21 years old now. It's old enough to drink. It's old enough to be one of Bartender Smiley's um, patrons. This is my first time watching it. I probably could have gone the rest of my days without watching it. Doesn't make it bad, but it's really, really middle of the pack for me. So I'm going with a three shot. Yeah, I think I agree. Three is, is sort of what I was thinking too, because it is very middle of the pack. I think that what you said about the leads is spot on. And I would add to that, that the supporting cast is too talented to be mm -hmm. wasted on leads like this, right? Like bring, if you're making this movie, you know, you know, did you notice that Danny DeVito is a producer on this? Yeah, that's crazy. Like, let's get Danny DeVito to throw his weight around a little bit and make this, make these people hire real comedians. Right. I mean, you could even have put Danny DeVito, like Danny DeVito would have been a great villain of this film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh put him, is he Dean Cain to you or is he uh, oh, Fred he, Lillard's he can, character? Oh, he could be Dean Cain. Yeah. I would I would actually much rather see him as Dean Kane. Although I understand why they made the choice that they did for Dean Kane. Yeah. It makes perfect sense for right. him to be the foil. So I don't know. Maybe make him Fred Willard's character, but Fred Willard's perfect where he is. Matter yeah. of fact, oh, Danny DeVito be the vice president. How funny would it be that Essence Atkins is Danny DeVito's daughter? See, I can't that would be that. hilarious. That, that is would too be hilarious. hilarious. Uh, but yeah, man, that's uh, it's it's a three for me because out of all of the other stoner comedies that I've seen, I would put almost all of them above this, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, that again doesn't mean it's bad. It's it's a fine film to feature in a lineup if you're doing like a stoner comedy marathon. Put this on yeah. in the middle somewhere. Uh, yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, like absolutely. that's really it, right? Is it's fine. Right. It's it's fine. It's it's not. I'm not going to go out of my way to get back on Tubi and watch it again. If it's on yeah. Amazon Prime, I'm not going to watch it because there's other things that I can watch. Absolutely. Um, all right. So that is going to do it for this episode of the Plotaholics podcast. If you are watching us on Twitch right now, then stick around or at least plan on coming back in just a little bit. We are going to record live the special Brian Tan wedding episode of the Plotaholics podcast featuring special guests, Michelle and Sharon. They're going to join us here to discuss wedding crashers. Uh, and if you are listening to us right now uh, in your ear holes via uh, Apple Podcasts or uh, some other such nonsense, then you will be able to catch the wedding crashers episode in one week, uh, both uh, on the audio version and the video version will be available on YouTube. Uh, beyond that, who knows what we're doing? I don't I haven't looked at the schedule. We'll figure it out later, but we will be back in just a little bit with uh, Wedding Crashers. Thank you guys. Uh, make sure again that you like, subscribe, share, etc. cetera. Uh, and uh, yeah, we will uh, talk to you again soon. Ladies. Take a trip with us to New Bar. Just promise not to drink the goo. If you get sucked into the matrix, matrix, we will send a phone for you. Do you believe in fate? But every movie has a plot hole, and every hole gets filled somehow. With whiskey, wine, or blue milk, just don't cut me off right now.
you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man.